Hello everyone and welcome to this video. A few days ago I bought a laptop for £20 or £30 including the fuel to drive there and back to pick up which is about $40 at the current exchange rate. In this video I'll be taking a look at whether we got what we paid for because £20 is quite low for a computer or whether this was actually an absolute bargain. I hope you enjoy this video. The laptop in question is an HP Compact 6910P. Back at its release in 2007, this particular model would have set you back upwards of £1,500. As you can see, it has the business look of the HP laptops of its time, and this was exactly the target audience of these systems. There's a fingerprint scanner here, which is quite cool, and the laptop also has a second set of mouse buttons, which makes gaming a lot easier. There's also a second mouse pointer on here too. The hardware on this system is very easily accessible. On the underside we have one of the two RAM slots, and the wireless network adapter is here. The primary and secondary battery slots, and the HP docking stations here too. There's also the first storage bay here, and in the bottom left is the Bluetooth module. By unscrewing the three keyboard screws, we also have easy access to the rest of the system too. The keyboard is then easily removed by unclipping these four clips. It then lifts out after unplugging the cables. Inside we have the second RAM slot, modem card, and a spare network card slot, and then the CPU, chipset and cooler. Now we'll take a look at the specs. This is for quite beastly in its time, Core 2 Duo T9300, dual core, 2.5 GHz and with 6 MB of cache. Next to it, we have the Intel GM965 chipset with built-in graphics. Of course, this integrated graphics will very likely be a limiting factor today. As for the memory, we have two oddly unmatched sticks of 2GB DDR2 555MHz RAM. This gives us a total of 4GB, which does run in dual channel. For the storage, we have a 250GB Seagate Momentous 5400RPM hard drive, as well as the HB Multibay storage option. This allows for the quick and easy swapping between hard drive and optical drive. It's a nice feature to have for a laptop, as they typically only allow for one hard drive to be used. There was also one other thing included, a solid state drive, a Samsung SSD to be precise. Personally, I believe this made the £20 deal really worth it. It's a 120GB Samsung 850 EVO SSD, and it will surely give this old laptop a helping hand. And so, with the SSD in the primary drive bay, and the optical drive in the multi bay, I set out to install Windows 10 on this old £20 laptop to see just what it can do in 2020, and even maybe beyond. While waiting now for Windows 10 to update to the current newest build, 2004, having a look around the system shows just how responsive an SSD can make things. Furthermore, now that the graphics drivers are installed, the 1440x900 16x10 screen really does look crisp, compared even to many of the mid-range laptops that are out today. The 4GB of RAM is a minimum nowadays, and it still allows for multiple things to be going on at once, as opposed to if this laptop only had 2GB, which was common back in 2007. Browsing through the C drive, which is of course the SSD, is very snappy too. Here with the newest version of Windows running, we load up Microsoft Edge to see just how day-to-day -day things perform nowadays. I'm not sure why the whites are showing up red on my camera. Anyway. We'll be using YouTube to test out its performance and average daily tasks, and then heading into some gaming later on. As you can see, web pages load fairly quickly, and so far this old hardware is able to fully utilise the internet at my place. The video loads up at a quite acceptable speed, and to make things better, 1080p resolution is seemingly handled with ease. Even with the full HD video running, doing other things alongside is still very viable. I believe this is what the cool kids call hacking nowadays. So yes, 
for day-to-day -day use, this £20 laptop passed as the test. Based on that alone, I'd say this was a bargain. In my opinion, Half-Life 2, played at the absolute minimum settings, is just about playable. You could expect anywhere between the low 20s and the high 40s FPS wise. When things start to get towards the lower end, the stuttering does unfortunately become apparent. Counter-Strike Global Offensive on the minimum settings at native resolution makes for a not too playable experience. Then, even after dropping the resolution down, it's not great. I think that's a no for CSGO. We move on to the original 2007 release of Bioshock now. The stuttering that was seen in CSGO is now CS gone. However, frames per second is still low, and this is hardly the top gaming experience. It's quite funny to imagine a businessman on a train trying to play his games on one of these laptops back in 2007 or 8. Up next is a personal favourite of mine, Stalker's Shadow of Chernobyl. We see around 20 FPS most of the time on the minimum settings. One game that does run well is the gem from the last century, Age of Empires. And that's that. In my opinion, £20 is definitely a good deal for this system. It holds up very nicely in day-to-day -day tasks and is testimony to how well an SSD can benefit an older system. It's even good for some light gaming as long as you're happy with sticking to the older titles. And with that, thanks to everyone for watching. I hope you liked it. Goodbye.